Hello, uh, welcome to Vilnius Theater Lelia. Uh, another day. So <laughs> I will start. So today I will try to give uh, you a short short lecture aimed at looking at the phenomenon of visual theater from the perspective of humanities. Uh, as, as an umbrella term, visual theater does not describe any one pure type of theater. It contains more than one type of theater. There are different categorizations, but according uh, to Estonian theater researcher Medli Peste and her uh, presentation at the 2019 uh, Intref Festival in the discussion, what is visual theater? The umbrella term of visual theater consists of the following types of theater. It's uh, puppet theater, object theater, uh, material theater, physical theater, and digital theater. So, and various combination of these type of theater. So, visual theater refuses to prioritization the text and literature and uh, that vertical hierarchy of stage components. It manifests a horizontal hierarchy of stage components and its dramaturgy is based on the dialogue between equal components, not the characters themselves, but stage components such as light, bodies, objects, scenography, physicality, puppets, sound, music, uh, actors, voices, voiceovers, you name it. Uh, this specificity requires us to adopt, uh, I think, a different uh, methodological approach that allows us to analyze, perceive, and create this type of performing arts uh, work as visual theater. So different from tetralogy or even worse, literary studies. However, for a long time, theater has been the object of literary studies. And Erika Fischer-Lichter writes a lot about it, but... Uh, Everyone probably knows that already, so therefore today I decided to kind of speculate uh, in search of uh, a scientific theory suitable to reflect on the phenomenon of visual theater, to try uh, to draw historical and ontological links between visual theater and the choosing theory, to adopt a few terms and try to use them to discuss puppet theater, object theater, and visual theater. So that's what we're going to do here. <laughs> For some time I have been considering which of these approaches uh, and angles to choose for this lecture. And uh, I think between these kind of opportunities, the levels of experience of symbolic and iconic thought, the theory of vertical and horizontal montage by Sergei Eisenstein, or the pictorial turn that took place at the end of 20th century in the humanities, which uh, turned away from the text and words and instead turned to, towards to language of images. And I realized that all these theories are more or less unified by the one man, theorist of visuality, William John Thomas Mitchell. So, uh, William Mitchell is an American scientist who has focused on media theory and visual culture in his monograph, Psychonology. 1986 and Theory of Images, uh, 1994, and his essay, What Do Pictures Want, Want, in 2005, won the prestigious James Russell Lowell Prize of the Modern Language Association in 2005. And fun, fun fact, um, maybe we'll, there will be a callback uh, later, maybe not, but one of the, in his interviews, Mitchell made the connection between his interest in visual cultures and his interest in William Blake, uh, an artist who was both a poet and a painter, and whose work explored the limits and boundaries of textual and visual perception. So, uh, back to the visual theater. We'll come to the Mitchells a little bit later. I try to use kind of broken non-liner structure to be more in harmony with this uh, subject. So it's my joke, it's only, you can laugh here because it's the only joke in this lecture. <laughs> mm. So the term visual theater itself was first used in uh, 1977 by the American critic, publisher and editor of PEG, a journal of performance and art, Bonnie Moranka. And uh, in her book, The Theory of Images, to describe the early works of the American director Robert Wilson, and then usually used to describe performances in which the dominant stage language is non-verbal, non-literary, and more visual. 
Uh, Dilna Goder in her book uh, states that the main characteristic of visual theater is that the language of the performance with the audience is primarily created by means of scenic, scenic uh, images rather than the means of narrative. She also notes that the programs of festivals and European theaters are increasingly moving away from direct narrative and there are more and more productions whose dramaturgy is based on association rather than narrative or a plot and appeals primarily to the subconscious rather than to the intellect. The author also explains the popularity of such a fragmented and collaged theater in the context of the post-dramatic tradition and pictorial turn. She calls it a crisis of rationalism, where the quest to explain everything completely has made us fear for unexplainable. This growing fear and the feeling that everything around us is happening randomly despite humans' attempts to rationalize everything in the main reason for the explosive popularity uh, is the main reason for the popularity of visual theater. Um, so, the appearance of such theater is connected uh, to a pictorial term. So the term pictorial turn or visual turn was first mentioned by the same visual theorist that old guy we mentioned it recently, William Mitchell in 1992. Article published in Art Forum and later incorporated into the introductory chapter of his global influential book, Picture uh, Theory, Essays and Verbal and Visual Representation, published in 1994. The visual turn is connected to the critic of the linguistic term in 20th century philosophy in which language and its possibilities become the central problem of philosophy. It is a general disappointment of words and the limit of the meanings they express. This disappointment offers the solution to declare the image as the basis on the main foundation for accepting and knowing the world. The sense of seeing is being privileged over other senses and communication systems. Uh, the term pictorial turn opens for us like a new chapter in the humanities, a new chapter for humanity, and of course a new chapter for art and culture. It, it has become important to uh, rethink uh, questions of representation, presentation, the sense of seeing, uh, the observation uh, and appearance of objects and subjects, and especially a uh, human perception. Uh, this is the theory of oculocentrism, which is uh, the 20th century Czech philosopher William Flusser in his work writings uh, referred to a change in socio-cultural reality, which is beginning to reject linear thinking, narrative and consistency. This change refuses to explain the world and to simplify or narrate it. Uh, this change extends the unexplainable world, establish a new type of imaginary, and watches processes without generalizations. This is the source of um, the post-dramatic theater tradition. When we reject uh, uh, the basis narrative, uh, we started to deconstruct it and to focus on the experience rather than the entire story. We started to insist on artistic impact, position, and invention rather than generalizations and antique pathos. When the images are identified, it turns out that <laughs> there are all kinds of images, uh, not just images, digital, fake, historical, artificial, original, reproduced, imaginary, factual, verified and beyond verification. Moreover, a deeper dive into the, this uh, terminology revealed that image and picture are not the same thing. Uh, one of the fundamental paradigms of Mitchell's theory, uh, which separates the idea of image from the physical object that express it. According to Mitchell, we can hang a picture, but we cannot hang an image. In the theater, it would be like um, uh, Edward Gordon Craig's Uber Marionette or Supper Puppet, uh, Nietzsche's Overman or Plato's Allegory of the Cave. The concrete mise-en-scene and the realization of the image is only a shadow of the image itself. It is only a reference to the idea of image, a picture, but not an image itself. According to him, the image is an intellectual property. 
it is not possible to copy the image itself because it remains locked in the mind of person who keeps it. Only the picture <clears throat> uh, of the image can be copied. The image is phantasmagoric, virtual, spectral, changing, not fixable, and the picture is an interpretation of that image, plus supporting material, like a puppet. It is the appearance on, of an immaterial image in a material medium, like a puppet. <laughs> um, and um, in his transform reality, unclear, new reality, the documentation and objective representation of so-called reality becomes a big problem. Trust in reality and the textual experience of it starting to face a crisis. The American academic author and uh, the term, the same term, pictorial term, uh, inventor, iconologist, uh, scientist, uh, Mitchell's project of critical iconology, most notably inspired by Sigmund Freud and Karl Marx, proposes to consider images as living and independent. Mitchell's theory is based on four main concepts of image uh, science. So pictorial term, meta pictures, image and uh, picture difference, and bio pictures. In here, we are starting to get closer to that theater territory. So, uh, bio pictures is the theoretical possibility of recreating new images that would realize the oldest human dream of creation of living image. To create a replica or a copy that is not just a mechanical copy, but an organic and biologically capable simulacrum of living organism. At the epicenter of this concept would be that uh, gothic horror novel Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus by the famous English author Mary Shelley, published in 1818 which tells the story about a uh, young scientist, Victor Frankenstein, who builds a living biological being from the parts of a dead body. This novel was staged in 2017 in the Black Eyed Theatre in Bracknell, England, and its director, Elliot Guraloroca, chose a puppet <laughs> to play that beer picture. Uh, quote, uh, that now I will act that director. For me, the beauty of excitement of theater is that it is live, unfolding in front of you as you watch uh, and the decision to have uh, the creature as a life-sized bunraku style puppet seemed to fit perfectly with this approach. I hope that we can mirror Frankenstein's obsession with bringing dead matter to life, being animating, manipulating, and giving life to the puppet in front of you, hopefully creating the illusion that it has a life of its own. It seemed to me to be a lovely theatrical metaphor for the act of creation in the story itself. So, in this way, uh, the very idea of puppetry becomes <coughs> a metaphor for Mitchell's concept of bio-picture. <coughs> brought back to life, animated, storytelling material, imitating human movements, communicating to us the fundamental idea of divine creation. The puppet which replicates human defects, personality and physique, expresses the ancient divine desire of human beings to create the autonomously living creature based on his own image, as God did in the Bible when he created human beings. Bring your own image into the picture and make it alive, thoughtful and independent. One that can create other pictures and your own image and extend the life of your image to eternity. This reproduction of biological pictures is a deep and subconscious desire of humanity. Uh, this had been expressed in many of the science fiction, futuristic and anti-utopian films you have seen showing and control production of clones. Uh, Bioengineering is not a new field for which th th theoretical knowledge is already sufficient. However, these experiments are on hold right now. The first successful cloning was back in 1996 uh, at the Roslyn Institute in Scotland when Sheep Dolly was cloned. Uh, this human brainchild survived for up 
to six years, and the success, successful experiment was announced to the public a full year after the successful cloning. Global conference on the topic uh, on this topic now invite not only bioscientists but also philosophers, anthropologists, the uh, theologians, and professors of social science and humanities. The bioscientists said we are ready to do it, but you have to decide what to do next. You who study ethics, history, humanity, art, deeds, human guilt, morality, you have to decide. It's too big or is it's too big um, a responsibility for scientists on one field because it will change the whole world. Uh, these professors of the humanities and social science, uh, philosophers, sit down and form bioethics committees. Uh, their task is to decide uh, if these discoveries are worth continuing or will it destroy the comfort of humanity, will it destroy us or must we stop? So. In this context, uh, it is worth remembering the performance Uncanny Valley by the German technological theater group Rimini Protocol, which took part in the program of this year's International Theater Festival Serenas in Vilnius. Um, there are no live actors on the stage of Uncanny Valley, uh, and the lecture about his life, adventures, biography, books he wrote, and the woman he loved is given by humanoid robot. Uh, a seated robot controlled from a distance used technological movements to mimic the way people speak. His face and body was based on the face and body of Thomas Mele, uh, the co-author of the text of his play. This picture was created from the image of this performance creator. And technically, according to professor for theater studies at the University of Kent in uh, Canterbury, Patrice Pavi, dictionary, uh, he wrote that dictionary of theatrical terms, and it's a traditional, conventional, old fashioned puppet uh, theater. Because an unliving, artificial, aesthetically human or animal looking object is brought to life by a technician or puppeteer in front of the audience. Its animation is a performance that focuses on the illusion of life and the copying of the same human or animal movements. So this technological theater or robots and bio pictures, illusions theater belongs to the future of puppetry, not drama theater. That is until it copies a human body and is controlled, animated by real human, the original, the creator. Another Mitchell term I would like to return is meta pictures. These are paintings or pictures uh, that are used to reveal the very idea of representation. Uh, these pictures are orientated to unmask seeing itself as a topic. Uh, this self-analytical and self-referential nature of the image can create second-order representations, so-called meta-pictures. These include the di dialectical representations. For example, two images in one, the seeing of which depends on the focus of your eye optical illusions, and other representations that deceive or manipulate our vision. The next level of meta-pictures is meta-meta pictures. <laughs> um, these are pictures whose self-referential nature unmask the image itself rather than the seeing of the, we, 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 of the, seeing of the viewer. In art, uh, this would be uh, the group portrait Meninos, by the Spanish Baroque painter Diego Velázquez in 1656. It centers on Margarita, and um, uh, she's the daughter of King Philip IV of Spain, and then aged about four with her Frelines, fre fre Frelinos. And the painting is considered to be Diego Velázquez's most famous work and one of the most important paintings in the history of European art. Uh, he's in collection at the Prada Museum in Madrid. And Diego Velázquez 
depicts himself on the left of the painting. Oh, it's moving. Uh, with a brush in front of an easel. Uh, the royal couple, Philip IV and Marianne of Austria, are reflected in a mirror on the back wall of the room. The painting is set in the artist's studio at the royal palace in Madrid, and it is possible to assume that Velasquez portrayed himself painting a portrait of the royal couple, and the scene in the painting is shown from the perspective of the eyes of the king and queen. Um, Michel Foucault, a French historian and philosopher associated with uh, the structuralist and post-structuralist movements, described this painting this way. We observe ourselves, uh, then the painter observe us. We are made visible in his eyes by the same light that allows us to see him. And just when we are about to become aware of ourselves, as if we had been transcribed by his hands in a mirror, it becomes clear to us that we can understand nothing about the mirror, only its matte surface. This is the other side of our soul. <laughs> so, and this is a photograph from Italian director Romeo Castellucci monumental, monumental tri trilogy stage in the Avignon Festival in 2008 dedicated to 700th anniversary of Dante. Next year, Vilnius will be 700 years old, so it's a little less old than the, that wonderful text. <laughs> the, to represent the sea of uh, the dead, the semi-transparent material was released over the heads of the audience. With beautiful religious music, the audience becomes actors. They become a picture that they cannot see. The picture is created and uh, addressed uh, to be seen by Castellucci himself, but not by the public. Without a huge number of extras for this sea of death scene, he cast his own audience to do this. By taking this path, he could uh, not guarantee that he, the scene would look like the same he wanted. So, in this way, the director becomes a spectator and the audience becomes a picture. And that picture trying to express the image in the viewer's mind, and that viewer is director. So, this concept turns the tables and proposes a new concept of presentation and seeing and provides an example of meta-meta picture in the context of visual theater. Another concept that we need to enter the territory of theater is the difference between iconic and symbolic thinking. Um, Mitchell claims that perception is before interpretation and contextualization of the image. Uh, image seeing, recognition and association work through analogies and it's called iconic thought. This capacity is activated automatically and long before the mind first attempt to explain images rationally or conceptually, and it's called symbolic thought. Thus, uh, the pictorial turn and the increasing visuality of the artworks directly reinforced the phenomenology, phenomenological perception of cinema and theater. There are bodily reception becomes more important than the understanding and interpretation of meanings. Merleau-Ponty, for example, roots all phenomenology in the experience of the image through the body. The paradigm of iconic thinking, not yet conceptualized, but symbolic thinking later activate is what Mitchell calls a state of double consciousness. The spectator is affected by two equal and confronting impulses, one is suggesting to keep a distance and the other suggesting a final surrender to the image. In the theatrical tradition, iconic thinking and surrender uh, to the visible image could be compared to Stanislavski direction revolution. On the other hand, symbolic thinking and the resulting distance from the image could be compared to Bertolt Brecht epic theater tradition. Meanwhile, in the theory of the image, these two radically opposite concepts fit together in one problematic human being state, double consciousness. 
For this dualism to express, Mitchell chose Michelangelo Merisi da Caravaggio Narcissus, in which a character looking at the image of himself is mentally releasing that he is looking at a fake person in front of him, but in contradiction to his mind, perceptually, he believes in the reality of this image as an extension of existing reality. In this way, the visual image transforms his relationship to the whole of reality, not just to himself. Uh, and in my opinion, uh, this concept of Mitchell double consciousness could become a fundamental methodological theory of puppet theater, combining the concepts of Brechtian that planetarum, uh, the critical spectator, and that Stanislavski carousel, the involved emotional spectator, into one complicated experience of double consciousness, we get a constant daily dilemma of puppet theater, the relationship between the puppeter and the animated puppet. Unless, unless it's a perfect black box with uh, perfectly light cut profiles and precise puppeteers, but usually we see the puppeters animating the puppet, but at the same time we believe in the puppet's aliveness just as Narcissus falls uh, for his own reflection, knowing it is not real. <laughs> In this um, Philippe Genty performance shown almost 20 years ago on Paul Daniel's Magic TV show, the marionette itself is in a state of double consciousness. In this Philippe Genty performance shown almost... <laughs> I read the same sentence. So, um, she, she, experienced that, the, the, she experienced a double consciousness uh, after realizing that uh, it is a being control, that it has no freedom, it decides uh, of its own valuation to break free from it, and one by one breaks the strings and dies. However, the very act of this free will in breaking the strings shows that she is wrong or rather right and wrong in the same time, free and not free in the same time. The same theme is developed in uh, 2004 animated fantasy film Strings, about the son of the ostensibly assassinated ruler, ruler who sets out to avenge, revenge his father. Uh, his destiny is to take revenge it's the story of Hamlet or Lion King, I don't know if you like it. <laughs> it's the same story, <laughs> whatever. Um, yesterday we talked about that children theater, but we didn't talk about a number of children's stories that have been written from the great classic for adults and, uh, and the way around. So it's a quite interesting theme too, but okay, let's go back. Um, and this film is made with uh, marionettes uh, whose string reveal being uh, a hostage to the destiny the gods gave to you. The characters uh, see these strings, react to them, uh, to them, understand it, but still make choices and want to resist the gods and fate. So with this lecture, I didn't want to complete the, the full methodological picture but uh, I don't know, just to try to show the small possibility of trying to understand the field of contemporary puppets, objects, and visual theater in the context of the image theory. Uh, contemporary puppet and object theater uses a large number of um, visual theory strategies, strategies, strategies. Thinks about the same things, um, analyze similar themes, and the terminology and methodological approach of the image theory can sometimes be, I don't know, maybe more inspiring to analyze or create contemporary visual puppet or object theater than the tetralogical or an art theoretical approach. So um, the language of image raises questions and issues of the same importance and size as the language of words. Language has been studied in many cultures for so many years, but the study of visual language is only beginning to take a first steps. And contemporary self-reflexive theater, which is profound and raises the questions, is, in my opinion, a major instrument for this research. 
To finish, I would like to read a quote from Mitchell about the pictorial turn in visual language, which I think is also uh, very suitable for visual theater and contemporary puppetry for thought. Uh, according to Mitchell, the visual turn is not a return to naive mimetic representation theories or a renewed metaphysics of the presence of the image, rather, it is a post-linguistic, post-semiotic discovery of the image as a complex in interaction, reinvasion of visuality, machine, discourse, bodies, and figurativity. It is the knowledge that spectatorship, looking, gazing, observing, and practices of visual pleasure can be equally deeply problematic as the various form of reading decoding, interpreting, and etc. And the visual experience or visually, visually literacy may not be fully explained by the model of textuality. So, um, so I hope you find uh, it at least a little interesting and uh, we have some more time, we can share our experience. I want to, you know, uh, not discuss, but just share experience with each other Mm, I, I finished the lecture right now, I'm no longer the main speaker, but uh, we are like uh, equal group, but I'm just sitting here, and I'm, I'm the main on the spotlight, okay. Perhaps from, <laughs> perhaps from uh, the performances or the uh, theatrical experiences you have experienced uh, through your life, uh, you remember that double consciousness or confusing meta-image or meta-meta-image, some strange thoughts or something else that breaks down the usual narrative of reality that confronts you with a cognitive dissonance inside yourself that brings you into a crisis of recognition of reality or kind of paradox or a new level of perception, interpretation, understanding of image or images uh, in visual puppet and object theater. So maybe you have some experience like in that AA group, you know. <laughs> no, okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.